Time for tonight's Spirit of the Program interview brought to you by Spirit Communications, built for your business and the Carolina's choice for voice, data, internet, cloud, and fiber services. And we are going to visit now with Kevin Epley, head women's tennis coach at South Carolina. Coach, thanks for the time tonight. Absolutely. It's been one heck of a ride so far this year for your ladies, 14-2 uh, and two for the first time since 1995. And in that 14 win total, you've got six SEC victories and you haven't lost yet. I mean, wow, that's a great start. Absolutely. It wasn't something that we were anticipating by any means. Uh, at the beginning of February, February 6th and February 13th, we'd taken two, uh, you know, by by our you know estimation as far as the season was going to go, some uh, some tough losses. And after that, after that second match, uh, we sat under our, our tent and had a team meeting and wondered uh, if we were going to win any SEC matches. So uh, we're pretty happy where we are right now. It's crazy how that it can come together sometimes, I guess. But when you look at this, you're in the top ten nationally for the first time since 1983, so some relatively uncharted territory. Um, what has been the key to getting it going to that degree? Well, I think the key is uh, the personnel, quite frankly. I think it's the, uh, the girls we've recru recruited here. Um, they're a very competitive bunch, um, and they love tennis. And we've talked all year that it's about passion, it's about toughness, it's about grit. We're certainly not the most talented team. Um, in fact, as far as talent goes from a recruiting perspective, we're probably in the bottom third of the SEC. But when it get, gets right down to it, about three quarters away through a match, um, we sort of turn on the Jets, or we have thus far. So there's a lot of season left, and we're, we're happy with, with uh, how things have gone this far. Um, but we're certainly showing uh, a lot of grit, a lot of toughness, a lot of heart. I would imagine you talk about, you know, it's, it's the uh – Jimmy's and Joe's, not the X's and O's, as they like to say. Right. Uh, being in the top ten right now, that, that can only help moving forward in that regard. It helps build a little bit more credibility in the recruiting trail. Oh, absolutely. I mean, any, any movement up in the rankings helps uh, across the board. Um, it's something that we've been uh, hoping for for a couple of years now. We've, we were close last year. Uh, we had a reputation for being uh, tough and gritty last year, but we've kind of turned up the volume with that this year. Uh, we've had six, four, three matches, and uh, we're wow. winning all of the uh, we're winning all of the clinching points, and it's with different uh, different players each time, which is really a testament to the the team spirit and the culture we have here, um, and the the sort of desire to win and uh, just we refusal to lose. For folks that don't know, kind of break down how the match unfolds. I know you start with the doubles point. Uh, so kind of explain to folks how, how the competition typically goes and how you get to that 4-3 mode in terms of uh, who's going to get there first and where the decision's going to be made. Well, they've shortened the doubles format this year, and uh, the, the doubles point goes relatively uh, quickly. We're trying to bring more fans into the sport, shorten the overall uh, time that a match is, is on. It could be up to five hours in years past. So uh, you've got to kind of come out hot in the doubles point. It's uh, the first. You play three doubles matches, one, two, and three. It's the first two to get two victories, and they get the, that one point. Then you go into your six singles matches, which is in the uh, order of ability, and it's the first team to get to four. So um, we've had some pretty dramatic uh, matches, three all down to the final match. Uh, we've had uh, our number six girl in that position. We, uh, we've had our number, three girl, our number three girl, our number two girl. I mean, it's just been one of these things that uh, it's come down to that, that uh, point where in the past – uh, we'd kind of fade away, and this and this year is unique in that they just keep stepping up, and that was something we talked about um, last year and this year, but this year we're actually uh, getting it done. Visiting with Kevin Epley, head women's tennis coach with the Gamecocks. If you'd like to join us, got a question for Coach, give us a ring, 404-6100 or 866-667-1075. Um, when you talk about uh, those those kinds of matches when it is – you know, nip and tuck, grinding down to the end. The one thing I've noticed from, you know, on GamecocksOnline.com, you see some great video. And when, when that final point is won, that's when you know it's a team sport again because it is usually a mad rush from the whole team out there to greet whoever won that final point. That is really neat to see. Shows the, uh, the you know, the spirit that goes in 
to tennis as a team sport. And, and I, I think that's what makes it really special on the collegiate level when you see that and you realize it's no different than anything else going on out there. You're playing for the Gamecocks. You're playing for, playing for your university. And, and, and in an individual sport, playing it in that team style, it's really cool to see that kind of uh, buy-in, I guess you would say. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, each year you have a couple of these matches. You, you, you expect that there's going to come down to a, a deciding match, and, and every player wants at one point in their career – to be that deciding match, to, to have that opportunity, to have the entire team rush the court and, and embrace them. And it, it literally feels like every match that's happening. And we, we haven't been on the, on the other side of that equation where we're you know, sort of falling down in despair. And we're seeing that on the other teams. And we keep saying it's going to happen. We can't keep winning them all. <laughs> but it just, it just so happens. I mean, you know, in all of those four or three matches, at, at one point, uh, to, to some degree to, or another, we've been down. And so it's not only overcoming that deficit, but it's getting it to the point where we're at three all and then stepping up and getting it done. And if people, th one of the reasons we want to shorten that, the format is if people stick it out to that moment, they, they really get it. Mm -hmm. They really get what, what college tennis is all about. Sometimes uh, the matches drag on and people come at the beginning, they sort of uh, disappear, they move on to other things throughout their day. Well, now the matches are shorter and get to that point, and it is truly dramatic. I mean, it, it really is an intense moment when you're down to that final match and everyone's cheering. Well, you, you got a big opportunity for folks to come taste, taste it for themselves, if you will, this weekend, right? Number 13, Florida, uh, coming to town. Is that th that's this, this Saturday, correct? That is this Saturday. Uh, from what I understand, the rankings come out tomorrow. I think uh, Florida's going to move up to seven. Oh, wow. Big and, jump. Yeah, and we will move up one to eight. So it'll be a seven and eight showdown. Florida is one of the favorite teams to win the NCAA championship. They haven't had um, the opportunity to play as many uh, ranked players, uh, ranked teams at this point. Um, very, very strong team, always at the top of the conference. Um, it, will be a, it will be a showdown for sure. It'll be, it'll be a battle. Get started at 1 p.m. at the Carolina Tennis Center, which if you have not been out there, folks, has a lot of great opportunities to watch from and, uh, and, and impact the match. If you, if you get enough folks there, it, it can really it can make, be a factor. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize the quality of tennis that they, they can come out and see. I mean, these, these, these are some of the best juniors in the world in the SEC. I mean, quite frankly, the 13 teams uh, could make it into the NCAA tournament this year. Um, this, this conference is just outrageously tough. I know it is in all sports, but if you go down the line in, in women's tennis, it's, it really is outrageous. I mean, we could, we could have, uh, you know, realistically, we could have four of the top ten teams, maybe five of the top ten teams. Um, so it's a, it's a great quality tennis. Columbia is a big tennis town mm -hmm. uh, in the south, and you can get right on top of the court, get very intimate with the, uh, with the match itself. And uh, the more you come out, the more you get to know the personality of the players and how they play and how they compete. Uh, and it really is a, a, a unique opportunity to come out and watch this match. We, we play this Saturday. We're going to have a tailgate um, at 11. Prior to the match, we're going to have some barbecue uh, from, a, from a famous place in Sumter, free to all. Um, we would love to get a big crowd out there because it will be an exciting day. And, and I, you know, talking about what a great venue it is, if you don't know where it is, because it's a relatively new facility compared to where you used to play your matches, it's basically, if, if folks know where the Gamecock Softball Stadium is, right. where the baseball stadium used to be, all of that, that athletic venue that has really come together there includes just phenomenal tennis facilities. Uh, and as I said, it's a great, they've got great spectator areas as well. So, again, that's Saturday at 1 p.m., Gamecocks taking on the Florida Gators. Going to talk some more with Coach Epley about some of the individual young ladies on his team, so stick with us. We'll come back with more of Inside the Roost in just a moment. We're live, as always, from the Hilton Columbia Center, just a few steps outside of the fabulous Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. And Ruth's Chris wants you to celebrate the uh, USC graduation with perfection. They've got a, uh, a, a great graduation celebration uh, scheduled, and uh, it can be your grad and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse being featured. Complimentary champagne toast and a personalized menu for you as well. And that's all coming up in, in May, of course, Friday. I think that is May the uh, 8th when that takes place at Roots Chris Steakhouse, and you can call them to get more information. Kevin Epley, head women's tennis coach of the Gamecocks, still to come. We will, uh, in the 8 o'clock hours, we extend the show out to 8.30. We'll talk with uh, the SEC Player of the Week in Baseball, John Jones, in his first year in the Gamecock program and making an unbelievable impact already 
uh, with this team. He will join us, and between now and then, we will uh, preview tonight's NIT matchup between South Carolina and Georgia Tech with Ken Segura from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So still lots to get to tonight here on the program, and you can join us by calling 866-667-1075 or 404-6100 as we continue with our Spirit of the Program interview brought to you by Spirit Communications. Coach Hadley Berg, 14-0 this spring in singles. Best start for a Gamecock since 1995. Tell us a little bit about her. Well, I guess you had her on your show yep. uh, not too long ago, and um, she's a, uh, a young lady from NorCal uh, and her good friend Paige Klein. We have two uh, NorCal superstars this year. Um, and, you know, she is a player that just keeps on improving. Uh, she's uh, been working on some elements of her game and for a while now, and uh, they've really come, um, come to the fore here lately. She's putting it all together. And she's a real tough out because she does some things that, that most of these uh, kids these days don't do. She can hit a slice. She can kind of keep the ball low. She can come in and play sort of an old school type of game. Um, on top of it, she's a, a great young lady, a great, um, a great leader on the team, and has just uh, been able to step up this year in, in all of those uh, critical matches that, uh, I mean, it's she and a uh, um, young lady named Bridget Follen from uh, – from England, have been kind of holding down two points, and you know, if you do the math, it's only <laughs> that's halfway there. <laughs> halfway there, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I, I told them that in a meeting about a week ago, and then I think they started thinking about it and getting a little nervous. But, uh, <laughs> but they've they've been um, doing their part for sure, and the, you know, and they're the hardest workers, and that's kind of how it works. I mean, they sort of led the uh, led the group in work uh, and uh, effort in the fall, and set the set the example and. This is how we do it here, and uh, they sort of uh, everyone kind of uh, followed in their footsteps, and and here we are. But uh, yeah, she's and she also plays number one doubles, um, and she's extraordinary to watch because she kind of flies around the net and, and does things around the net that you just don't see anymore. Yeah, her partner in doubles, as you mentioned, Paige, they're they're old friends. So yeah. that I guess was kind of a no-brainer to pair those two up. Are they playing as as your top your top doubles pair? And how's that gone for them so far? Well, it, it actually wasn't a no-brainer because really? uh, yeah, because we we played them in practice matches and we kind of looked at them and they, they were uh, it just wasn't really clicking. And then we said, you know what, we're going to throw them in a match once to see what happens. And it was just like wildfire. I mean, they just really freed Hadley up. And Paige is such a competitor and such a gamer. Um, that they just were relentless in their attack. And uh, they, they truly are one of the best teams in the country. They won a wild card tournament not too long ago to get into the Volvo Open. So they're going to be playing April 5th in a professional tournament out there in Charleston, which is a high-profile event. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if they can kind of calm their nerves and, and get on that stage and, and just do, their, the th do what they do, I, I, it really wouldn't surprise me if they won a round. Interesting. Wow. Uh, you, you mentioned – uh, Bridget, uh, she had going into this weekend, I know, would run off at eight straight wins. Did she get yeah. both victories this weekend against State and, uh, and Ole Miss? Well, Bridget is a real tough out. I mean, if you're going to beat Bridget, you're going to have to be out there for a long time. She's incredibly fit. Um, she's worked incredibly hard at her game, um, and she's a, she's a great leader as well. She didn't get to finish her match uh, against uh, Ole Miss. Could you um, cruise four to one in that one? Yeah, I wouldn't say cruise. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, we that's a sports writer's term, yeah, isn't it? We yeah, haven't, we haven't cruised in any way. <laughs> you look at that final score, it's four to one. But we were, we were down in a lot of matches. In fact, Hadley was down five two in the deciding set, came back and won it. Um, Ingrid was down a set in four two. Uh, you know, it, Paige was down 3-0 in the second set. I mean, it, like I said, I mean, we're down in these situations uh, quite often. It's just at that point, that three-quarter point in a match, we turn on the Jets, and, and the, the team start to – they just – they really haven't been able to hang with us down the stretch. That was one of our goals. But, uh, yeah, Bridget's, uh, Bridget's a tough out down there, and, uh, you know, if you're going to beat her, you, you better be ready to, to play a lot of tennis. The Friday win over Mississippi State went two days. <laughs> yeah. You had to extend that one a little bit due to some weather and held on for a 4-3 to three victory. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's – we got a young team. I mean, overall we have five freshmen, and we have two at the top of the lineup, some of our veterans down at the, uh, at the lower end of the lineup. So, you know, how do they acclimate to the SEC, the toughest uh, conference in the country? You know, how do you, how do you get some relative success and, and then keep it going and not have a letdown? These are all questions that we ask as coaches. Um, we, we get into Mississippi State. We were a little flat in doubles um, for the first time in a while. 
and uh, we were down 1-0 going into going into Saturday. And uh, you know we had a big challenge ahead of us because that's a heck of a good team. Mm -hmm. um, and you know it was a war, and again we just uh, kept plugging away, and eventually came down to Hadley's match, and uh, she got it done. Well, Coach, big one coming up Saturday. Again, folks, that is Florida and South Carolina. When the new rankings come out tomorrow, they'll both be top ten teams. That is at 1 p.m. at the Carolina Tennis Center. I know you'd love to see a, a, a jam-packed uh, grandstand there. And good luck to you. Hopefully we can visit again uh, later in the year as you, you're heading, re heading into postseason play. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you having me. We, like I said, we have tailgate at uh, 11 a.m. Come on out. We'll have uh, barbecue out there. Should be a great day. Absolutely. Kevin Epley, head women's tennis coach of the Gamecocks, 6-0 and in the SEC for the first time in program history and ranked in the top ten for the first time since 1983. Get out there and cheer them on Saturday against the Gators at 1 o'clock.